Hey guys, what's up? We're going to look at transverse and longitudinal waves. Let's recap what we mean by waves. Waves transfer energy without transferring matter, and they do this through vibrations. So let's use an everyday wave which we come across all the time, sound waves. You're listening to me now, and that's a result of sound waves transferring kinetic energy through vibrations. So if you have a loudspeaker, the loudspeaker vibrates forwards and backwards. And that in turn causes the air particles to vibrate forwards and backwards. And these particles collide with each other and they transfer kinetic energy. So the energy transfers along, but the air particles remain in their position and they just vibrate around it. So that's an example of a wave. There are many different types of waves, for example, water waves, mechanical waves, electromagnetic waves. But we can classify them into one of two groups. We can either call them transverse waves or longitudinal. And we're going to learn the difference between these two types of wave. So first of all, transverse waves. Transverse waves are waves in which the vibrations are at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer. So if the vibration is in the vertical plane here and the energy transfer is in the horizontal plane, they're at 90 degrees to each other. This is a transverse wave. It's easier demonstrated through some real life examples. So we're gonna look at two mechanical waves here. We've got a slinky and we've got a string on a musical instrument such as a guitar. These two here, A and B, are both examples of mechanical waves. So on a slinky, you can vibrate it up and down. That's the vibration, but the kinetic energy gets transferred at a 90 degree angle. So it's a transverse wave. When you pluck a string on a guitar, you vibrate it up and down but the energy gets transferred at a 90 degree angle. So once again, it's a transverse wave because the vibration is at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer. If you go to a beach, you'll see water waves. Water waves are another example of transverse waves. And that's because the vibrations go up and down, but the energy transfer is at 90 degrees. And if you were to watch a little boat on the water, you'll see that it will simply vibrate up and down at 90 degrees to the motion, to the energy transfer of that wave. A really large famous group of waves is the EM spectrum. So you've got radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, UV, X-ray and gamma rays. And I'm sure you've heard of many of those, if not all of those waves, but all of the EM spectrum waves are transverse. And that's because the oscillations of the electric and the magnetic field, we use B for magnetic fields, are at 90 degrees to the energy transfer. So all EM waves are transverse. The final type of wave that is an example of a transverse wave is an S seismic wave or seismic S wave. There's different types of seismic waves, but the S seismic wave is a transverse wave. And this is where the ground itself in an earthquake vibrates up and down and the energy transfer is at 90 degrees. They're the secondary seismic waves. They come after the primary ones and they travel a little bit slower than primary, but the ground vibrates up and down. So you know when the S wave is hitting because people actually in earthquakes feel the ground rise and fall ever so slightly during an earthquake. So there we have it, transverse waves. The vibrations are at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer. We have mechanical waves, water waves, electromagnetic waves, and seismic S waves. The second group of waves are known as longitudinal waves. And there's a little difference here. The vibration is parallel along the direction of energy transfer. And that's how I remember the definition, longitudinal, the vibrations are along the direction of energy transfer. So if we we're going to do it as a little diagram, here's the vibration and the energy transfer is in the same direction. They are parallel to each other. The most common example of this is sound, as we've seen at the very start of this video. The loudspeaker vibrates forwards and backwards. The air particles vibrate forwards and backwards. And the kinetic energy is also um, transmitted in the same forwards direction. They're parallel. The vibrations and the energy transfer are parallel. You can also demonstrate this on a mechanical wave using a slinky. So slinkies can be used to show transverse and longitudinal. Here, instead of vibrating the slinky up and down, you simply push the slinky forwards and backwards. You vibrate it forwards and backwards, and it causes a series of compressions where the slinkies, um, sort of the slinky rings get closer together, and it causes rarefactions where the slinky rings separate out. So it's sometimes called a compression wave. The vibration is forwards and backwards, 
and the energy transfer is along the same direction. If you wanted to measure the wavelength on a sound or a mechanical wave, you just do the distance between two compressions. So on this sound wave up here, that there is your wavelength. The final example of longitudinal waves are seismic waves. And we've seen that seismic S waves are transverse, but seismic P waves, the primary waves, are actually longitudinal. And this is where the ground vibrates sideways and the energy transfer is also along parallel along the same direction. These are the first type of seismic waves. So if you live in a country which has got lots of earthquakes, you get used to the feeling of the different waves that come along. The P waves cause a sideways motion because they're longitudinal, whereas S waves cause a vertical motion because they're a transverse wave. So in summary, longitudinal waves, the vibration is parallel along the direction of energy transfer, and we have sound, mechanical, and we have seismic P waves. This little table summarizes the whole of this video. And let's just look at it just for one last time. It's really important to get the definitions. So transverse, the vibrations are at 90 degrees to the energy transfer. And most waves are transverse. You have EM waves, seismic S waves, slinky or what are known as mechanical waves, such as those on a string as well on a guitar, and water waves also. Longitudinal waves, the clue is in the name, long. The vibrations are parallel along the direction of energy transfer. And there's only three examples that are really common that you can use for your exam. You can say sound, seismic, and slinky or mechanical. And they all begin with the letter S. And that's another way to remember longitudinal waves, all of them begin with S if you need to think of examples. So that's it. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.